Jesus. In reverence to reading the word of the Lord, I would like to invite those who can to stand up. Matthew, New Testament. Matthew. Matthew. We read from verse 5 to 11. And then verse 13. Matthew 8 from verse 5 to 11. And then afterwards verse 13. Amen. Diz assim a palavra do nosso Deus. E entrando Jesus em Cafarnaum, chegou junto dele um centurião, rogando-lhe e dizendo: Senhor, o meu criado jaz em casa paralítico e violentamente atormentado. E Jesus lhe disse: Eu irei e lhe darei saúde. E o centurião, respondendo, disse, Senhor, eu não sou digno que entres debaixo do meu telhado, mas dize somente uma palavra, e o meu criado sarará. Pois também eu sou homem sobre autoridade, e tenho soldados às minhas ordens, e digo a este, vai, e ele vai, e a outro vem, e ele vem. E ao meu criado, faz isto, e ele o faz. E maravilhoso Jesus, ouvindo isto, e disse aos que o seguiam, em verdade vos digo que nem mesmo em Israel encontrei tanta fé. Mas eu vos digo que muitos virão do Oriente e do Ocidente, e assentar-se-ão à mesa com Abraão, Isaac e Jacó no reino de Deus. Versículo 13. Então disse Jesus ao centurião, vai... E como crestes, te seja feito. E naquela mesma hora, o seu criado sarou. Te adoramos, Pai, bendizemos. His servant was healed that same hour. Lord, bless the service. And the operation of the Holy Spirit may be with us in your word. And that you may continue the service, blessing your people and your church. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated.
Ela luz. Glória a Jesus. When Jesus entered into the temple, Jesus had already entered into the temple, the church of the Jewish people, and was in Capernaum. The name Capernaum is a city of Naum or comfort, and the place of comfort, refreshing, and the relief. Jesus had already been in Capernaum in other occasions. In the book of Mark, it describes that Jesus had already gone through that place and he had already purified a leopard. And the leopard came to Jesus and said, and asked, Lord, if you want, you can clean me up. And Jesus said, I want, be clean. And immediately he was healed from that sickness. The Lord Jesus used his word to heal the leopard. Peter was from the city of Capernaum. He had a house there. He used to live there. His mother-in-law was sick at home. And Peter, and Peter brought her uh, mother-in-law to his house and when Jesus arrived in the house of Peter in Capernaum he didn't use his word but the Bible says that he touched he laid his hand upon her in order to help her in order to help the mother-in-law of Peter and when Jesus extended his stretched his arm to help uh, the mother-in-law Peter, the Bible says that she was healed from the sickness. She needed a hand to be uh, offered to her. She needed help. She needed help. She needed support because she was sick. She had an illness. She had a high fever. Whoever has a high fever sometimes uh, is delirious. So then Jesus goes touched on uh, the mother-in-law of Peter and the word says my brother that she got up and she got up to serve them blessed be the name of the Lord she was a servant of God as soon as that sickness that illness went away she got up to serve them the word of the Lord says that Jesus was in the temple also in Capernaum and there was a man there that was being tormented by a spirit an evil spirit and Jesus came and used his word and said be quiet and that man was delivered through God's through Jesus' word and the Bible says Jesus' uh, fame, Jesus became famous. He became known in the entire Galilee. Everybody uh, was aware of Jesus, about Jesus. And they used to say, he teaches with boldness, with, not with boldness of men or the priests or the, of the scribes. His boldness is different. His authority is different because he speaks and immediately his word uh, generates uh, what he wants, he generates healing, salvation, and deliverance. And also there was a man that was paralyzed in Capernaum that was carried by people and when they pushed that man in the middle of the house where Jesus was, he, Jesus said, your sins have been forgiven. So Jesus, this Jesus used his word to forgive sins. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the people thought that it was, was not good enough just to forgive his sins. Jesus said, now take up your bed and walk. He also healed that man, a paralyzed man. So Jesus heals, he saves and forgives sins. 
Jesus, as we sang this, sang here, he is amazing. And Jesus entered again into Capernaum, and a centurion, centurion came to him. He was a Roman citizen. He was a very good person, high-ranked person, a man that had authority. And he said, I am a man of authority. A man that knows what authority is. He said, I have 100 people at my disposal, 100 soldiers. I, I ordered them to go and come, and I said, come and do this, and they do. And he had also a servant. And many times people ask, might ask, oh, this man is centurion, he's a Roman. It was, uh, was the best thing to be a citizen uh, of the Roman Empire. It's like uh, uh, an American general, a man of honor. He was honored by his peers. He was uh, above 100 men. He had authority above 100 men. And one of his servants was sick. And I was I was reminded today of uh, the 100 sheep. A shepherd had 100 sheep. He left at 99 and went after that single sheep because that sheep was special for him. This centurion also had 100 men, and one of them was sick. And he was concerned with his servant. My brethren, we're going through a moment in which the world doesn't care much. If I have 100 and I lose one, what a difference is going to make. And this individual, he was a good boss. And you know why he was a good boss? He was a good employer because he had a good employee. He gave great worth to that co-worker that served, that was at his disposal. And his co-worker, he was working, he was not working. And many times, today, man is considered as disposal disposable while you are producing riches you're profiting then the uh, your boss tells you oh you're a good one you're a good guy but you have an infirmity you have a sickness and then your boss finds someone else to take your place you were living in a world of disposable things uh, disposable cup disposable plastic wear uh, disposable clothing Disposable straws, disposable cars, disposable houses, disposable families, disposable father, disposable mother, disposable children. Everything is disposable today. And Jesus says, love one another. And the second command, commandment of Jesus is to love your neighbor like yourself. That centurion, he loved his servant. He loved his work. He loved his co-worker. And he went there to ask Jesus not for his own benefit, but for his co-worker. Because he, is, he was the one who needed a blessing. He was sick. He was ill. The Bible says that he was being also even being tormented. And how many t people today, they have done this. They have gone up to Capernaum to meet with Jesus in order for asking for in order to ask for a blessing, not for themselves but for their co-worker. In this month. This church 
had, has prayed and went on early dawn services, fasted for their co-workers because their co-workers are special for this church and much more than that, they are special for Jesus. And the word, my brethren, says that he went there to plead. He went to ask. He was pleading. And this month, we pleaded to the Lord. We asked the Lord so that the Lord may give a blessing to our co-workers. He was paralyzed. He could not walk. He was being greatly tormented and how many of our co-workers are not in the same situation without being able to walk tormented by many things they need a deliverance they need a salvation they need a healing of standing up once again to walk on the, the path that God has proposed for their lives and Jesus my brethren he said I will I will go where your co where is uh, your co-worker located i will go and jesus uh, was willing to go and jesus goes and, and blesses and he heals and jesus delivers and and saves and my brethren people say in the book of mark or look i'm not sure at the age if it's not one in one of these books is on the other in one of these other two Gospels, in Mark and Luke, it speaks of something interesting about this centurion. And the centurion, he loves our nation. He loves our nation. And he himself has edified us into the temple. So we're speaking about the a soldier, a centurion of a Roman citizen, a, a Gentile, not a, a Jewish man, that has helped on the construction of the temple. Is someone that loves Israel, that loves the Jewish people. And he had a testimony from the Jewish people. And the Jewish went there to plead so that Jesus would answer his plea. It is on this other <coughs> gospel. And Jesus went there and said, I will go. I'll give uh, health to that person. And Jesus was not amazed because this man had already contributed for, for the building of the temple. Jesus was not amazed because this man loved the Jewish people, the nation, the Jewish people. Jesus was not amazed with that. And when Jesus went away towards the house of this uh, Roman citizen, the centurion, the centurion said, Jesus, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy uh, to have you enter into my house. I'm a centurion. I'm a Roman citizen, but I'm not worthy. I'm, I'm not part of a holy nation. I'm, I'm not of a holy people. I'm not part of the elected people. I'm not part of the chosen ones, the children of the kingdom. I'm not worthy. My brethren, he was a Roman citizen, he was a centurion, but before God, before Jesus, he felt himself to be inferior. He was humble. He didn't come with authority of a centur Roman centurion giving orders. No, he came pleading, he was asking, and he, was, he even said, I'm not worthy. I need a blessing. I need a healing, I need a deliverance, but I'm not worthy. I didn't come here to force you to do something for me, but I came here to plead, to implore, to ask, 
to supplicate, to cry out, ask you, Lord, to operate in my house, operate in my life, operate a miracle in my life. I'm not worthy that you come under my roof. You felt that, that he was unworthy, and of course, he was unworthy. And another thing, my brethren, my brethren, the centurion, he knew the law. A Roman centurion is, it was like an ambassador. He would, when we, he went to a place, he needed to know the law. He knew, needed to know the law of the Romans, but also the law of the location, and according to the law of the Lord. A Jewish man could not enter into the house of a person that was not Jewish. If Jesus entered into the house of the centurion, the traditional Jewish would say, oh, he's breaking the law. He's, he's not doing according to the law. And Jesus didn't come here to break the law, but he came to fulfill the law. And the Roman centurion, he didn't want any confusion, but he wanted to have a and receive a blessing. If Jesus entered into his house, it would generate uh, discomfort. The Jewish people would have a reason to accuse Jesus because Jesus had entered into the house of somebody who was not Jewish. So in the book of Acts of the Apostles, it, it speaks about another centurion, the centurion called Cornelius. And Peter entered into the house of the centurion Cornelius. And Peter said the following, Acts 10, 20, or 8. And it's not, it's not correct for a Jewish man to uh, enter into the house of a non-Jewish. And he, he makes a quote regarding the law of the man. It's not possible. It's forbidden. But now, Peter was no longer under the law. Because Jesus in the cross of Calvary has fulfilled all the law. Peter now lived in the period of grace. So there was no impediment that was impediment of the law. Where the law could not reach, the grace, the favor, the love, and the mercy of God arrived. So that human this Roman citizen he said, you know, I'm not worthy to have you un go under my roof. And he also said, just say a word. Just a word of your power in the name of Jesus, I will be victorious. A word and my, just with one of your words, and my servant will be healed. Because the leopard, he was healed with one word from Jesus. He said, I want to be healed clean. The paralyzed was forgiven of his sins because Jesus used his word. He said, your sins have been forgiven. The paralytic, in order for, to walk, he, Jesus said, you get up and walk. The man, in order to be delivered, he, Jesus, with one word, he spelled the enemy from that person. And Jesus used his word when uh, he was with the disciples in the boat and the, and the stormy sea, and he said, See, calm down, and there was great calm. Bartimaeus, when he came to Jesus, he said, and he, Jesus asked, what do you want, Bartimaeus? And he said, I want you to see. And Jesus said, see, and your faith has saved you. So Jesus always uses his word. And the centurion went there seeking a word from Jesus, but not a word from man, because if it was just a word of man, he would have given it himself. And the centurion knew of one thing, that he had a man with authority, and he said, and if he said to one of his soldiers, go there and resolve this problem, and the soldier would resolve the problem without his presence. And he knew that he didn't even use it, neither Jesus to enter his house, because Jesus would resolve the problem of his house. My brethren, just one word of Jesus can resolve the problem in your house. A word of God can heal you, deliver it, and save you. A word from God may forgive your sins. A word of God may cause the sea 
and the wind to stop, uh, to uh, bother you and to cease the, the storm in your life. With just one word, with just one word, my, my servant will be healed. And what Jesus has for you, for, for me, for each one of us, is a word, but a word of, from God, a word of power, a word of authority. And that's how it was, my brethren. The word said that Jesus was amazed when he asked a word. The centurion said, just a word. And if you tell Jesus, just a word. And my problems are going to be resolved. Then your problems are going to be resolved. Just a word and my son will be resurrected. Your son will resurrect. Just one word. And there will be harmony, fellowship, and blessing in your house and your home. There will be blessing, harmony, and fellowship in your house with just one word. Just one word is enough that all the doors are going to be open, spiritual and material. Just one word. And the Lord said the following I've never seen it. I should really say that. I have never found it, not even in Israel, I have found so much faith. And that centurion had faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. What pleased Jesus was to find in that centurion, he found faith. It was not because he was uh, uh, worked on the, the temple or because he loved the Gentile, uh, the Jewish people. God's not going to bless because you love the Jewish people or, or because you have to be the church or you work on the formation of the church, physical or spiritually. But God admires in your life, in my life, in our lives, is when He finds faith in our hearts. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Whoever comes close to God and know that it's necessary that he exists. The centurion believed. Not even Israel have found so much faith. And I told that many will come from the east and the west, and they will sit down at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. What Jesus was saying there at that temple that there was going to come people from the east and the west, the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, that would come by faith seeking a word of salvation for their lives. And these people were, was going, were going to find this word in Jesus. And because they believe in the word of Jesus, they would sit down at the table. In other words, there would be fellowship that there will be participants in the same inheritance and the same project and the same pact, the same alliance that the Lord has made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because Abraham, the covenant with Abraham was made by faith. The Bible says that Abraham believed in the Lord and this was given to him in, as justice. Jacob was reached by Isaac and Isaac was also reached by faith. Jacob was also reached by faith because Jacob had no right to the inheritance. Jacob was inferior to his son Esau. He was the second. He was not the firstborn. He didn't have the right to inheritance. But God said that God said that he loved Jacob. He was reached by love, by the grace and the, the favor and the mercy that God had. And by faith that he had, that brought him to the presence of the Lord. And the word says, my brethren, that not even in those places he has found such faith, but they would all sit down at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. And by faith in Jesus, we'll be sitting down at the table and we'll eat with the king, uh, Jesus. And the Lord had a word for the centurion. Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed at 
that same hour, the one who served him, the one who helped him, the one who uh, helped uh, to sustain his home, his house, his health was restored and he once again began to serve the Lord. He was at the service of the Lord. And tonight, that's what the Lord wants to do with you. He wants to restore you so that we can be at the service of our King. The Lord has shown in a spiritual gift. Uh, he has shown a man. He's shown a man, a, a soldier with an armor. And tonight, uh, oil was being poured on this armor. And the soldier was, it looked like that. He was sick without the means to continue. But the Lord would now restore the life of this centurion, this soldier. He would then be able to continue serving on this army of his Lord. At that day, the Lord has restored the house of the Roman centurion without needing to go there, with just with a word. The Lord Jesus has done it. No matter what is your need, the reason why you came here to Capernaum, to meet with Jesus, seeking a word. The Lord has a word for your life, for your home, for your house, for your work environment. And the word is this, as you have believed, thus shall it be done in you. If you believe, my brethren, you see the glory of God. Now, let us hear a song. Glory to God. Let us stand up. 
the Lord has also shown in a vision. A man that is sick to the point of of losing his life. And what caused this infirmity is a bitterness that he harbors against a family member. And this bitterness has been present in his life for already many years. And tonight, the Lord would come close to this man and would ask if he wanted to be healed and if he wanted to be cured. You want to be healed? You want to be cured? And the answer to this man, of this man, was the following. I want to be healed. I want to be cured. And the Lord would then say to this man, You are healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you. We're thankful for everything that you have done to, for our lives and our favor and our benefits for your grace towards our lives, for the service, for each person who is, who is here, for your sweet presence in our midst. We praise you and glorify you in your holy name and we plead, Lord, that you receive our praise and adoration, all our gratitude. Take us home in peace to our homes. Give us a, a blessed week. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. In the name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our sweet and eternal Father, and the sweet and consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We want to uh, tell you, the sister, you who are in the service, you are welcome to this place. If you need uh, clarification and assistance, and regarding the spiritual gift, the brethren are here to at your disposal. Raise your hand so that we may be able to identify you. And you are also invited to return every Tuesday and Thursday, at, always at 8 p.m. We also we have service here. And also Saturday at 6 o'clock, we have a meeting with the women. And Saturday and Sunday, also at 7.30 of the night, we'll have a service of glorification of the Lord. And in the morning, every Sunday at 10.30 in the morning, we have our Sunday school. And after the assistance, there will be a short meeting with the youth on the upper room. And I would like to remind the church that from this week forward, there's, we're going to start the classes for baptism and for those who want to participate every Tuesday at 8 p.m. After service, we also have a meeting with the, the brethren who want to go down with the waters. If you need an assistant and pray for your life, raise your hand so that we can give you the proper assistance. 